Hello everybody, Eli here, and in today's tutorial we're going to take a look at how to set up physics in Wonderland Engine. By the end of the tutorial we should have something that looks a little like this. Let's get to it. To get started, the first thing we want to do is create a new project. And then, next, we're going to want to create a floor plane so that our objects don't just fall into the void forever. So to do that, we're just going to add an empty object, name this something like floor plane, and then uh, onto this, we're going to add a physics component. And this is the equivalent of a rigid body in other similar game engines. Uh, we're going to change the shape to plane. And then if we turn on physics shapes, okay, those are already on. Um, eventually it will show the actual collider, but I think we might need to run... Uh, the simulation wants for that to show up. Anyway, we're going to rotate this uh, 90 degrees so that our plane is facing up. And we have to be very careful about the rotation of plane colliders because if we switch to local, planes only collide from one direction. So you need to make sure that the red arrow or the x-axis is always pointing in the direction that you want objects to bounce off of, otherwise they're just going to fall through. And the last thing that we're going to want to do to make sure that this floor plane doesn't fall itself is set this physics body to be static. So that's the, again, similar to other game engines, uh, the static uh, box means that it will not move. Next, let's add physics to this box so we can actually see something happen. So I'm going to just drag it up. So once we do add physics, we can actually see what happens. So again, just adding the same physx component. And then we're going to change the collider type to box. And since this box is scaled by 0.5, we're going to want to do the same to the collider. So just set everything to 0.5. And that should be all we need to do. Now, we can actually test out physics in the editor without building, uh, either in the debug menu here or with the keyboard, short, uh, uh, keyboard shortcut Alt-S, which is what I prefer to do just because it's easier. And there we go. We can see we have physics on our box. And then to reset the position of everything to where it was before, either click in the menu or use the keyboard shortcut again. Now, to make it more interesting, let's make it so the cube bounces off of this cone here. So first we're going to just put it underneath the cube so that it bounces off of it. And then again, adding the physics component. And then we run into a slight problem because as you can see, there are no cone colliders in uh, default cone colliders in physics. So what we have to do instead is choose convex mesh, and then we can choose from all the meshes in our scene. And then we'll just choose primitive uh, cone, since that is what this mesh is. Make sure it's scaled by one, since we want the same scale as this object. And then let's see if it's clipping with the plane. Nope. All right, let's test that out. Maybe we can move it up a little so we can see it bounce. There we go. Now, this all works in the editor, but let's build it and see if it actually works in the browser. We have one small step we need to do before then. So we need to open up the projects setting view and then go to the physics tab and click enable. So this will make it so that physics is actually included in our build. And it looks like that was the thing I was missing with colliders and everything. So now we can see our plane and our cube and kind of what's going on everywhere. And just now let's delete this sphere as well because we're not really using it. 
Now, just clicking on play after we save. And it looks like it is maybe working. Let's try reloading. There we go. Hey, and it's working. Now, this scene works, but it's missing a little something. Let's make it so that when this cube hits anything, it makes uh, a sound. To do this, first, let's create a new component in our JS folder. I'm just going to call it hit. And then can open that for later. Then, going back to our root directory, let's create a new folder called static. And it is important to call this folder static because how this works is everything in the static folder is included in the final project uh, package so that our code can access it at runtime. So within the static folder, I'm just going to create a sounds folder. And in here, I'm just going to put the hit sound effect. Now you can find uh, sounds like this just by searching free game sound effects, or I can put a link to the one I used in the description so you can find that there. And now that we have all of that ready to go, let's switch over to the code. All right, here we are in the code for the hit component. First thing we're going to want to do is add a new audio source component. And we're going to set the source of this uh, audio to the file that we dragged in. And as a reminder, this path is relative to the static folder. Um, then from this object, we're going to grab the physx component and set the on collision callback. And this callback is a lambda with two parameters, one for the type, one for the event. Um, for now, we're just using only the type, but I like leaving in the event just because it's there. And then next, we need to add. So we can kind of cut that out. And then we're going to need to check the type of the component uh, because there are four different types of collision events touch, touch lost, trigger touch, and trigger touch lost. Now, the trigger events are for uh, physics bodies marked as trigger. So those um, you can't actually collide with, but you can use them for like volumes of your world and everything. Uh, but we only want this event to trigger when we first come into contact with something, uh, not like when we're flying through the air and hit a volume that marks a spot in your world. So why is that box clicking? <laughs> uh, so after we've checked that, we're going to play the sound on the sound source. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of extra debugging, which is just console.log hit. And the reason I'm doing this is because most browsers have a security feature where they don't play sound until the user has interacted with the page. So uh, I like having this there just to check is it that my browser is blocking sound or is it that my code is not working and if I see this I know that it's my code is working and I don't have to fix it so that's why I have that here now let's go test it out so going back to the editor let's add the hit component to our cube and press play I'm gonna just drag this over and it did not make any sound because again I have not interacted with the page but if we open the inspector, we can see that the hit callback was called four times. Uh, let me make that full screen. But hit callback was called four times. And we are getting a message about the audio context not being allowed to start because user has not yet interacted with the page. So let's just restart this and click really fast. And now we have sound. That is going to be all for this tutorial. If you have questions, just leave them in the comments. And if that's not enough, we do have a Discord server that is also linked in the description. Until next time, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.